For generations, beginning probably in the post-World War II era, turning 16 meant one thing above everything else, getting your driver's license. And while that's still true for many teens, it's apparently not the rite of passage it once was. And there may be consequences for us all because of it. Let's explore why this is happening with, in Nanaimo, British Columbia, Kylie Bowman, who leads the Youth Advisor Program at the Traffic Injury and Research Foundation. And here in our studio, Constable Sean Shapiro from the Toronto Police Service, who focuses on traffic safety education, and Teresa DiFelice, Assistant Vice President, Government and Community Relations at CAA, the Canadian Automobile Association for South Central Ontario. And it's great to have you two back in our studio, and Kylie, nice to have you on our program from the left coast uh, for the first time, I think. Let's just go through some stats here to set this up. Driving a right of passage no more, we are calling this. It's, uh, these numbers from The Economist. Here we go. American 16-year-olds with a driver's license. If we go back to 1997, almost half of American 16-year-olds had a driver's license. In the year 2020, just a quarter. Let's do another set of numbers here. Americans 20 to 24 without a driver's license. In 1983, a little over 8%, only 8%, of Americans 20 to 24 did not have a driver's license. Last year, 20%, a lot more. Also from the same Economist article, uh, in the United States, the proportion of people with licenses has fallen for every age group under 40 and is still falling, and even those who do have driver's licenses are driving less. Okay, let's start here. Kylie, when you got your driver's license, how old were you? I was 19. You were 19. You waited three years. How come? I started with a few lessons from a um, private teacher, and I felt that I hadn't quite learned enough to confidently drive out on the road, so I did another round of lessons. Gotcha. Teresa, how old were you? I was 16. I got my license on my 16th birthday. On the day. Yeah, absolutely. As, as one did back then. Yeah. Of course. Not that it was so long ago, but that's what I did too. <laughs> Sean, how about you? 16th birthday, I was there getting my 365 and I had my full G shortly thereafter. <laughs> 365, that's what we used to call it back Absolutely. in the day. What did that mean anyway? It was valid for a year. It'll, it was the equivalent of a G1 and it allowed you to drive with a supervising driver. Got it. Okay, pick up the story. Why does there seem to be this delay, this, this situation where no longer you know, 16-year-olds are out there on their birthday grabbing their driver's license as soon as they possibly can? I have to speculate. Uh, my, my wife doesn't drive. She doesn't have her license. I tried to get her to uh, to take her uh, program, but it didn't work out. Uh, <laughs> she never needed it. She lived on a, on a transit line. Uh, everything was so accessible, and across the street from where she lived was the, the grocery store. It was, just wasn't a need. And why spend the money on something that you're not going to use? Hmm. Teresa, what I do you think's going on? I think there's a number of things, right? Social media or, or mobile phones have replaced the need to see each other in person. You know, my 15-year-old son can... Uh, play games and connect with his friends all through a microphone and headset and not have to be in the same room to socialize, I think is one aspect. Cost is another. It's, it's mm -hmm. expensive and parents are driving their kids longer. Kylie, you told us about your own personal circumstances, but look society-wide now. Why do you, what would you add to the list of reasons why kids are not out there getting their driver's license as soon as they turn 16? Well, at least in BC, we have to go through um, an L learner's permit and then an N and then a full license. So a full license I got when I was 19 and getting your L you can get when you're 16 in BC. Um, these tests uh, cost money and a lot of young people in this generation are struggling with money and everything is just costing so much they simply cannot afford to get a vehicle or afford the insurance or even afford to take the test to get your license. Let me follow up with, uh, okay, admittedly a bit of a tricky question here. You were in an accident once upon a time, yes? Yes. Tell us about that. Yes, I was in an accident in 2011. I was eight years old at the time, and uh, I still struggle from the aftermath of that crash. I have a chronic neck and back pain that will stick with me for the rest of my life. And along with that came a concussion at the time, uh, whiplash, and I now deal with uh, PTSD. So 
My goodness, I'm, I'm so sorry to hear that, but would you say that's part of the explanation why you were not so gung-ho to get out there and get your license right away? Yeah, it was uh, it was scary, I guess, because uh, when you're that young, you feel completely safe around adults. The adult is driving, they know what they're doing, you have your complete trust in them, and to have that broken is hard to get over, and especially when it's now your turn to be the adult that needs to have control over the situation and you are now responsible for the other people in the vehicle. It's a lot of responsibility and it's a little scary. Understood, totally understand. Sean, uh, I think it's fair to say that most teenagers, most 16 year olds who are out there in the car for the first time, um, well, some of them get a bad rap for reckless driving and careless driving and irresponsible driving, unlike the way Kylie just described it. Do the facts, in fact, bear that out? There, there's no age restriction on poor driving behavior. And we have uh, adults of all ages and uh, young persons uh, committing similar offenses. Stunt driving isn't exclusive to younger folks. We see it across the board. So, um, you know, is there, if you wait till you're older, do you prevent the, the behavior? Not necessarily. What we see is responsible people do responsible things. I, I can say this because I was a 16 year old young man once upon a time. I'm not sure there's anything dumber in this world than a 16 year old young man. <laughs> And, you know, the notion of them being behind the wheel doesn't fill me with security and calm. Is that fair to say? Not all of them are bad. And, and I think it's the few that make a bad name for the rest. They get painted with a big brush, and, as do, do all of us. Uh, when we see young persons doing things, uh, it can have catastrophic uh, consequences. But again, the same thing for adults. And if you put off that poor behavior, it may just come up later on. I, I, there's no there's no specific fix. I don't, you know, I'm being a little facetious here, but I mean, it, the notion that when you're a 16-year-old young man, you feel completely invulnerable and that nothing bad can happen to you, that's what I'm referring to there. 100%. And, and at the same time, that feeling of, of uh, invulnerability uh, maybe is, allows you to get out and learn, whereas some people have developed some uh, anxiety around driving, and, and that's also a problem. Why do you believe, Teresa, that, if in fact you do, that it is actually important for younger people to get their driver's licenses at an earlier age as opposed to waiting until they're 20, 25, 30 before getting that done? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think the biggest reason why I think people should sort of look into this and get the experience of driving is it takes a long time to develop those experiences. It doesn't have to be all highway driving. It could be driving to the grocery store, you know, with mom and dad or, or you know, whoever you live with. Um, first of all, it takes, you know, five years to really come across the various scenarios. And there are jobs that are, you know, definitely requiring a driver's license as, mm -hmm. as part of the requirement. And so, you know, the, the work world is seeing a gap in, mm -hmm. in people getting into the workforce with a valid driver's license, with enough experience to be insured properly. Mm -hmm. um, and, and young people are, are shutting themselves out of the opportunity but it's the experience. The younger you start and you just take those opportunities with a caregiver, with a parent, with someone you trust to help you through those scenarios, um, you need that time in a car to really gain the experience. Kaylee, I should ask you, uh, do you feel like you missed out on something given that you did not get your license until you were 19? And if I'm reading between the lines here, you don't sound like you're all that thrilled or enamored to be in a car most of the time anyway. Do you feel you've missed some necessary experience to get that comfort level? I think I've almost gained more experience now. I am far more careful while driving, and then it's also learning to keep that balance between careful and confident. And it's just, a, it's a lot of work and effort that you have to go through to make, to build your way up to being that confident driver, that confident and safe driver. So at this point, I think it was worth the wait to get my full license, because now I feel completely confident behind the wheel. I, if you don't mind, I want to ask you another follow-up from, from the time you were in an accident. You were eight years old, so obviously you weren't driving. Who was driving? It was my cousin's mother, so my parents weren't around in the crash. And was she at fault in the accident? No, we were rear-ended on the highway. Okay, and I, I imagine, I mean, she obviously felt horrible about the fact that it happened, even though she was not at fault. Uh, yes. How'd you all handle that situation when it happened? Um, I was also in the car with my, my cousin, my cousin um, 
she was mostly screaming <laughs> during the whole time. Lots of panicking, lots of screaming. Um, but it was better <laughs> when my parents came to pick me up at the end. Um, of course, my, my cousin's mom felt felt bad about the situation and kept checking in on me. But it, it wasn't her fault. There's nothing she could have done to avoid the crash. Right. Now, Sean, I know, uh, I, I think we've talked about this before on this program. You don't like the word accident, do you? And you heard Kylie describe it as an accident. And out there they call them crashes as opposed to accidents usually. But we call them collisions because someone is inevitably responsible for what happened. It wasn't just by oopsie-doo. It, somebody did something wrong, mm -hmm. uh, something they could have done differently to prevent that collision. Do you believe, and again, you can... Uh, we all have anecdotal uh, information. You tell us what the evidence says. Distracted driving, using the cell phone while driving, texting while driving. Is that something that before... I know anybody can be stupid at any age behind the wheel, but is that something younger people do more of? You know what? It's a, it's a new layer, and I can tell you that I've charged primarily older people with the, uh, the offense of distracted driving, specifically using their handheld device. Uh, young folks, uh, I wouldn't say overrepresent. But it, it is a new layer compared to when I started driving when cell phones weren't a thing. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a real change that is plaguing driving today and, and road safety in general. We see more collisions as a result of distraction, whether it be, you know, just being out to lunch uh, and distracted in your own thoughts or actually using your phone. Uh, they pose the same risk. I'm trying to remember what they told us back in the day. Was it something like, don't change the radio while you're driving? Or, like, don't, don't be hunting for radio stations? Something along those lines. It was simple. If you're doing anything other than being focused on the road, you're not doing your job. Mm -hmm. Teresa, would fewer younger drivers on the road mean lower insurance premiums for everybody else who is mm -hmm. on the road? Well, um... No, because I think we, we see that, again, you know, if younger people aren't on the road right now and we've got the majority of people being older and driving, there's still crashes or collisions happening. Uh, what goes into pricing insurance is a whole bunch of stuff. Because we know 16-year-olds um, pay the highest premiums. I mean, they do. For the most part, right? I mean, there, there are higher risks, but that's associated with also tenure of driving, yeah, right? They have no record. They have no record. So, again, whether you're getting your, your license in a car for the first time at 30, if you don't have a record of ever having that, you're going to pay high premiums. Mm -hmm. There's greater risk, and this is why I say, like, get that practice in, because that practice will help those types of situations and encounter, and being able to avoid crashes and collisions, because you're more experienced in the skill itself. Sean, you got kids? I do. What do you got? I, I've got two young ladies at home, neither of whom are anywhere near the age of driving. We just graduated out of, uh, you know, a booster seat for one. And <laughs> and the, the deal with them is they're they're learning when they're in the car watching me drive. They're mm -hmm. picking up on my good and bad habits. So uh, I think that's something that most drivers don't realize. The training starts well before they get behind the wheel. Surely the guy in charge of traffic safety education for the Toronto Police Service has no bad driving habits. I certainly would think that way, but according to my daughter, uh, my youngest, who is always saying, Daddy, you're speeding, because she'll look at my uh, the uh, GPS on the screen, and if it flashes red for a moment, she's on me. So <laughs> she keeps me honest. But they are years away from getting their yeah. driver's licenses. Have and you thought about how you're going to handle I mean, you know, it's difficult that you're in the business, and uh, I assume you're not going to be a nervous front seat driver telling no, you what to I, do all the time. I'm going to send them to a professional teacher. And that's really important because uh, I don't want to add the TikTok traffic cop element <laughs> of, uh, of pressure to their learning process. But they are going to go to a learning uh, institute or a, a teacher because they're going to find out how to drive from someone who's been taught to teach it professionally and uh, without the stress of dad looming over their shoulder. I get that there's the stress of dad lo looming over their shoulder, but you know your stuff, actually. And you probably know it better than the person who's going to teach them. Any concerns about that? Well, I know the law, um, but in terms of how to teach a kid how to drive, that's something that I can't take credit for. Uh, I, I gave it a shot with my wife, didn't work so well. She, we, we, we went to a professional for her. And, uh, and, and really, I think that's the best way to go. Uh, I, I'll, I'll still be around online, hopefully, to help people along with understanding what the rules and penalties and consequences and so on are for what they do wrong and, and what the best practices are. But the actual nuts and bolts of driving, we'll leave it to the pros. Hmm. Okay. Kylie, we should talk about the difference between urban and rural here. And I wonder how much is a how much is uh, being in the big city uh, a factor in the fact that 16-year-olds aren't rushing out to get their licenses anymore? Um, there's so much going on, especially when you're learning how to drive. Nothing is second nature yet. Uh, every 
action, every minute detail, glancing at the rear view mirror, figuring out which way to flip the indicator. It's a, it's a step-by-step process that these new drivers have to figure out. And then also adding in the bustling city and someone not paying attention and just stepping into the road. So not only do we have to pay attention and think about every action within the vehicle, we have to think about the action of the other drivers, people on the streets, and it's just, it's exhausting. It's a lot. And a lot of people aren't willing to deal with that kind of anxiety. Mm-hmm. Maybe give us the experience from uh, that you, to the extent that you know in rural British Columbia, where particularly if you're growing up on a farm, you know, you're a four, 12, 13, 14 year old up on a tractor, you're learning how to drive at a very young age, right? Oh yeah. Yep, it's, it's a lot more relaxed. Um, you have more time to learn the ins and outs of your vehicle, when to glance in the mirror, when to flip the indicator, which button to press the light, turn on your headlights. All that stuff you can nail when you're in the safety of, it's it's just a out field. There, there's nothing else there. You don't need to worry about another vehicle or a random pedestrian jumping in front of you. It's It's a lot more low stress to learn. <laughs> Indeed. You know, Teresa, one thing we have not, uh, two words we have not used yet, are COVID-19. Yes. And I wonder whether part of the lack of interest in getting a driver's license among 16-year-olds today is that for the last two years, they haven't needed to go anywhere. It's true. Uh, You know, we've been on restrictions Mm -hmm. and... And it's also made it difficult, right, to to get testing done or to get into classes and get, you know, license uh, courses. Um, but I think it it showed people another way. Again, and some kids have adjusted their their lifestyle, right, because they learned to adapt in that scenario. And so the, these types of things are going to have an impact. Like the, like the pandemic has had an impact on a lot of areas of of kids growing up in that that time that normally would have been looking at the social factors, getting out, going to car shows, um, Hmm. uh, you know, what are they thinking about doing? Everyone's still a little bit more timid. Um, Not everybody, but a lot of people are a a lot more timid. And I think it it has had a bit of an impact. And if they're hearing from friends or family, um, again, driving together, driving around, mom and dad maybe, or who they live with, maybe on a hybrid work schedule, so they're around more. All of these things have a ripple effect that can sort of deter someone from going right away. Yeah. Um, Your CAA catchment area, South Central Ontario, mm-hmm. is there any rural in yes. that? Oh, there yes. is some. There is yes. some. Okay. So, I mean, unlike in the big city, mm-hmm. you, you kind of need a car in rural Ontario to get anywhere. Yes. So kids, in your experience, are, are 16-year-olds in rural Ontario more likely to be going out and getting their licenses at a young age? I think that that sometimes makes up what we see in the urban areas. So it feels like less teenagers are going for their license. But when I look at some of the data, you still have, it's it's kind of been flat. So it's not been growing in leaps and bounds, but it's kind of been flat. And and some assumptions are that it's being made up for in rural areas. Uh, You know, I have family in rural Ontario. And yes, like, as you said, you're driving tractors or you're driving ATVs for fun. And so it's, it's still a rite of passage. Um, because you've already been doing it and it's pre- pretty easy to get because you have the experience of driving. I gotta ask Sean this. I know you're a Toronto cop. You're not in rural Ontario, you're in Toronto. But I'm betting at some point in your experience you've pulled over somebody behind the wheel who was 15, 14. Did that happen? I don't know if I've ever had an underage driver. Huh. I've had unlicensed, I've had a lot of G1 <laughs> drivers uh, without an accompanying supervisor. Mm-hmm. And that, in fact, that was a big spike during COVID. We saw a lot of that. Uh, people who decided they were going to drive regardless of the fact that they couldn't go for their G2 testing, making it legal. And uh, they, they received, uh, you know, charges and suspensions as a result of that. Huh. Okay, I, I, I got to follow up on that. There, there were people, because they couldn't get their G2s and move up to the next level, they were only G1s. They said, to hell with it, I'm driving as if I have the whole thing anyway? They made some really bad choices. And uh, the consequences, aside from being uh, re- the first offense or first time being uh, uh, convicted, they'd get a 30-day suspension, second time 90, third time they get kicked right out of the program. And they were taking those risks because they decided they weren't willing to wait. And uh, not to mention the fact they're not licensed drivers. If they were in a collision, uh, their claims would have been denied by their insurer. Interesting. Do you... Okay, here we go. Do you blame them for doing that? Yes. You do. I, I, you understand you know, it? I can, I, can, I can relate to the frustration, yeah. Yeah. but I can't 
uh, let the, uh, the offense go. They're putting lives at risk, and uh, they're just not trained. Gotcha. I want to talk now about the environment. And I know more people are driving battery-powered cars, so there's no smoke coming out of the tailpipe, going up into the air, and ruining the environment more than otherwise. So, Kylie, to you first. This does raise the question of whether, given that there's still a lot of internal combustion cars on our roads, should we actually be encouraging kids to drive, given that more drivers, until we're all EV, means more pollution and not good for the planet? What do you think? Uh, I think it's important that uh, the younger generation gains that independence. I still... Because a lot of people now, at least my age, um, aren't moving out of their family home as early as they'd like to. So in their early 20s, mid 20s, late 20s, they're still with their parents. So they're sharing a vehicle. They're on the insurance of their parents' vehicle. So I think still learning how to drive, it's important, but you don't necessarily need to buy your own vehicle and add to that environmental impact. Hmm. Teresa, is there an argument to be made that actually not having teenagers driving is a good thing because it means less pollution? I think teens are, and, and younger generations, have been more educated around the environmental and, and sustainable factors. And, and I think that's why we're also seeing an uptake in things like electric scooters and electric bikes. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think there's some other options out there for them. Um, and I think, though, you know, again, the interest in, th in sustainable transportation like electric vehicles uh, and other vehicles that are probably on the horizon we haven't even talked about, mm -hmm. um, I think do sort of cover that. I kind of like what Kylie's saying is that, you know, you do have, there's a skill. There's something about learning to drive and a skill. So even when you're on a scooter or a bike, understanding what it means to drive and how to share the road and navigate each other's safety I think there's there's still an important factor that you can learn from the, the skill of driving. I think there's a life saving, uh, excuse me, a life saving and a health related skill as well. I mean, if you, if one of your parents, God forbid, faints or something, you got to get them to the hospital, or you got to take them to a doctor or something. You got to know how to drive. Fair to say? Listen, there's there's an emergency where you call 911 because we yeah. prefer to have an emergency personnel come and bring you that life saving uh, response right to your door, and then they have more time to get to the hospital. So driving, uh, emergency driving, should be left to professionals. But you're absolutely right. Having that skill and and being able to be independent and and do things like. I don't become a police officer. If you want to work for the Toronto Police, you've got to have a full G license. Uh, learner's permit, if you start that process later, you, you delay your career in law enforcement, for hmm. instance. Interesting. So, absolutely. But in terms of electric vehicles, and uh, uh, I don't know about that argument. I, I, that, that's not an area for me. <laughs> no, I got gotcha. you. Well, okay, let me put this to you then. Uh, again, back in our day, 16 years old, you went out, you got your license, and it's, it, to the best of my recollection, we had full access to all of the highways and everything in the province from the day we turned 16 once we got that 365, right? Nowadays, we've got the graduated licenses in place. Have they, in fact, made a difference in road safety by having kids have to wait however long to get that G2 and have somebody in the front seat with them in the meantime, et cetera? I think it prevents someone from doing what I did, which was like 30 days later having a full license and being left uh, to their own devices. Mm -hmm. and, and there is something to be said for having more time behind the wheel while supervised before being set free. I think it's a good thing. In fact, I'd like to see more testing and, and more rigorous things. We, we still have fairly so-so drivers. So, mm -hmm. uh, because there's a lot of bad that happens in terms of uh, collisions and whatnot, and it's not by accident. It's because someone made a mistake. Kylie, I know nobody wants to be discriminated against because of their age, but the reality is a 16-year-old's brain today, well, I'd say two things on this. A 16-year-old's brain today, scientifically speaking, is not as mature as, say, a 25 or a 35-year-old's. We know that to be true. And I'll go further in saying a 16-year-old today is, I'm sorry, simply not as mature as a 16-year-old was 25 or 50 years ago. I think that's also true. In which case, do you think it still makes sense to keep this graduated licensing in place Etc. I think it's definitely important to keep it in place, especially with now how much longer the getting your full license program is. You have a lot more time to practice your skills, mature with those skills, and become a safe driver. Hmm. I, I remember what it was like being 16 X number of years ago, and I can't believe they gave me my driver's license back then. Can you believe some 16-year-olds today are getting a driver's license and are able to go on the road? I mean, you've got to know people who are just not ready for that. 
Oh yeah, definitely. And especially those who've failed the test, the L test, it's, even, <laughs> it's a written test in BC. It's not even a driving test and have failed it on multiple times, six, seven, 12 times. And they finally get it and they're getting out there and it's awful to watch. <laughs> Some of that is concerning, but I do think that that is a minority that those are that terrible at driving. So I do think it's still you the practice and especially having a driver who has a full license in the vehicle with these learners, they're not on their own doing this stuff and they have a longer time to mature and master the art of driving. I've got, right. I've got to come to the defense of the young drivers sure. because um, it's not all young drivers that are bad. I see people at all ages that I really don't think should be driving. And one thing we do as police is we submit reports to have people re-examined for their driving skills if we think that they're at risk on the road. And I've done that on many occasions. That doesn't usually happen until they're in their 80s and 90s though, isn't that, that right? That is automatically based on age, but I can send a report in for anybody who is driving. Of any if age. I have a concern, if, if I don't think that they're meeting the requirements, you can, and they get reviewed. Okay, just finally, based on your experience, what percentage of people on the roads shouldn't have their licenses? That's a, that's a very dangerous question. Uh, I, I think that... that <laughs> that's why I'm asking uh, the guy yeah, in the black jacket. I, I don't have a stat. Uh, all I know is I deal with the worst drivers. I deal with the drivers who either choose to drive in a manner that is that is dangerous and uh, should cause them to lose their license, and I'm part of the process for getting their license taken away because every ticket gets the, some demerit points uh, in their in their pocket so they can have their license either removed uh, or uh, revoked or, or, or whatnot. But I, I see a lot of great drivers too, and unfortunately they have to deal with the people around them who are not driving safely. Gotcha. We're going to give the officer the last word on this program, which makes sense, I think, from where I'm sitting today. Kylie Bowman, we want to thank you for being there for us on the line from Nanaimo, British Columbia. Constable Sean Shapiro, Toronto police officer, obviously Mr. Traffic Safety Education on TikTok, and Teresa Di Felice with the Canadian Automobile Association for South Central Ontario. We're grateful to all three of you for coming on to TVO tonight. Thank you. Pleasure. Right. Thank you. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is made possible through generous philanthropic contributions from viewers like you. Thank you for supporting TVO's journalism.